Larry Warren does not believe his own account. His account of seeing a craft on the ground and then seeing three entities is a fabrication. Because of this, if we want to get closer to the truth about the Rendlesham incident, I think we must ignore everything Larry Warren has stated about the night he claims to have been involved. Larry does believe his own words when he says the US has lied to the UK for many years. He is committed to his country and expresses unity with the United States. Peter Robbins has either not believed Larry Warren's UFO story or has had serious doubts about it from the very beginning. Peter Robbins got involved with Larry Warren against his own best interests, but was not coerced into working with him. I don't rule out the possibility that Penniston saw an alien UFO. However, From reading Georgina Brunei's book on the case, it wasn't just Larry Warren that was putting out manufactured alien stories. As early as the 2nd of January 1981, just one week after the sensitive thing was in the forest, local UFO researcher Brenda Butler was fed disinformation from an American who was working at the base, who gave her the date of the 27th of December, and stated that aliens were busy repairing a crashed spacecraft in the forest that night. He also explained how we went out to the crash site in a jeep with three others. Sound familiar? Now if there was friction between the MOD and the US over this incident, we might ask whether the famous News of the World expose of the Holt Memo came about as a result of that friction. The US might have wanted the Holt Memo public so they could build on their UFO cover story. Perhaps the MOD said, if you don't tell us what really happened, we're going to make your memo public and embarrass you. So perhaps the Americans got hold of it from the British so they could then release it and handle the public narrative. I suspect Peter Robbins might be referring to the News of the World article here. I had first heard about this in 1983 after Larry had gone public and there were certain articles appearing about it. And what about Peter Robbins? Why would somebody who probably did not believe Larry Warren from the start ever get involved with him? You might know that after partnering with Larry Warren for 30 years, Peter Robin decided to distance himself from Larry Warren. I do not believe this was because he suddenly discovered Larry's account was unreliable. I suspect it was because Larry Warren no longer needed his support, because Larry now has plenty of other supporters who are propping up his fake account. Charles Holt recently stated that he would not have gone public if Larry Warren had not worked with Peter Robbins on the book Left at Eastgate. He stated, that just rankled me something terrible. I think this case demonstrates nicely that you should always believe none of what you hear and only half of what you see. I'm Richard D. Hall. Good night.